All right, we got a new project in the uh, garage here. So we have a TCM forklift, the FG25. This is a gasoline model. You can see there's no propane tank on the back. Seems like that was pretty common back in the, the day. This is something that was built between 1988 and 1991 from what I can understand. I'm not exactly sure as of yet. So the uh, the full spec on this is that it's an FG uh, 25 N2S. The N2s were made uh, a few years earlier than this. They were like the early 80s. So uh, I'm not sure if the, the O and the Y are the model year, perhaps. I'd be curious if anybody knows how to figure out the age of this thing, I'd like to know. It uh, was inspected in the factory, and that's the only time it's been inspected. I picked this up from a, uh, a construction company has had it for about 10 years now. Talking to the guy that worked on it, he said he's been there for five years and they haven't done any maintenance on this thing other than put a carburetor on it. And uh, that's it. He didn't think they changed the oil. They just added oil to it as needed. But at the same time, he didn't think it had gone through much gasoline either. Like, I think it has about a 60 liter tank and they don't think they ever filled it up in five years. They used to use it to unload trucks if they came back from the uh, the road with material on them. So take a look at it. This is an automatic model. I think there's only a forward and reverse gear from what I can tell. Here's the inching pedal, which is the brakes in the neutral. There, or just the, the brakes. Got the accelerator pedal. And uh, one of the reasons I picked this version was that it's got uh, extra two sticks on it here. So this one has got the side shift and it also has a uh, an accessory pair of hoses here. So if you wanted to run a, a rotator or a, uh, a scoop or even a snow plow on it, you could do that without having to have an accessory power unit. Leaks oil from the main uh, mast. This mast is actually one of the reasons why I picked this as well. This is very important when you're looking at a machine is to find out what the uh, max, uh, or sorry, the height is on this ver before it starts lifting the mass. There's a term for it, but I can't think of the name of it exactly. But this one here, you can lift the forks up to the top of the first stage before it lifts the mast. So that's quite good. So you can get about uh, six feet or so of height out of this before it uh, starts to get any taller. So it's uh, seven feet, two inches to the uh, top of the mast. So it'll fit in an eight foot garage door. If you have a seven foot garage, it's not gonna work out for you. You probably need to figure out a solution for that. Because if you get a, a machine that can fit through a seven foot garage door, it's going to be uh, kind of limited for various things. The other good thing about this is you can drive this into a, a seat container and lift without having to well, go through the roof of the seat container. You can stack pallets on top of each other inside the can. And this one's got off-road tires on it, which is the other reason I picked this thing. So uh, the tires quite possibly are the first or I don't know how long they last. It's got about 7,200 hours on it. And these tires are pretty much uh, used up. This tire on that side is a bit better shape. Um, trying to think of any other reasons I bought this. Yeah, so another reason was that TCM, which is now Unicarriers, is still around and they support their products. It looked like you can buy parts for this thing cheap and they're easy to find. Although you need to have the service manuals for it. You need the operator manual, the parts manual, and the uh, service manual. There's three different manuals. They're quite expensive from TCM. They're about $200 Canadian for the ones that do exist still. You can get them on eBay for about $60 US per piece. And I've, if you look at the links in the description of the video, you can find a whole bunch of them that I located on the internet and put them in one location just to be helpful. So uh, getting back to that. So there's two companies that sell a lot of manuals on eBay you'll find for TCM forklifts. One of them, the guy was asking about 120 bucks for the manual. And I offered him 65 bucks and he took it. Then the other guy was very hard on 120. He doesn't want to negotiate at all. I told him he was above market value, but I couldn't do much about that. So I uh, have to find another solution for that. I'm not paying 120 bucks US for a, 
a manual, but the problem is that to use one of these things in a work environment legally, you need to have a manual for it. Otherwise, you're going to get a, a ticket from the inspector immediately. And then obviously this thing needs to be uh, inspected. That's like a, a longer term plan for me. I'm just using it for personal use, just for scooting stuff around. Although I haven't really lifted anything yet because I don't know much about it. I don't want to have a big oil eruption all over the place. So one thing that's interesting is it says max fork height on here is 129 inches. I just tested it and it goes up to 162 inches, which is uh, 162 or maybe higher, 192, I guess. It was 16 feet. I wrote it down. But anyway, so it go. I got more than I paid for, which is good. Because at 16 feet, that's good enough for a 20 foot ceiling, in my opinion. So that's uh, as much as I'm ever going to have. If I have racks, I can put stuff on the racks. Like I said, it's got the, the side shift. It doesn't have the uh, accessory where you can move, uh, like spread the forks apart. But I guess it could set that up without an accessory hose here. So it must have uh, broken a hose and I just chucked it out. So it's just got a quick connect there on the one side of the block. And then on this side of the block, there's just a bolt. So I assume that they just broke the hose and threw it out. Sort of kind of in a vulnerable location where it's sticking out. There's a lot of rollers on this mast. I have to go through them and figure out how they're doing. The uh, seal that's supposed to be in here travels up and down at the mast. So you can see it's been leaking. They put a diaper down there at the bottom. So I think uh, I'll be taking the, the top of the mast off, which is really easy on this thing. I'll put it down later in the video, take another look at that. These forks are junk. One of them is bent. This one closest kind of droops. <laughs> so you know I can lift way more than it's rated for. So uh, anyway, they're junk. I'm not sure how old they are. They've got some writing on them. When you're buying them, I guess the critical dimension is from like here to here. That tells you the size of the class of the fork you need to buy. And there's like a little window there so you can slide the fork inwards and pop it out and off of there. So I'm going to be taking these forks off pretty soon because they just take up a bunch of space and I'm just going to be working on this for the time being. So I was, it's going to get all new hoses for all the lifting components. In the manual, they say to change the hoses every like two years and change the chain every two years, which is kind of, I guess, in a, a production environment when you're doing 4,000 hours a year on a machine, you probably would do that, but I wouldn't consider that for this thing. This is uh, faded. I started kind of scratching at it. Looks like uh, I can probably take this out and polish it with some toothpaste and I'll be able to see through it again. So that'll be good. The uh, parking brake doesn't work. It appears that one of the parking brake cables is missing, but they told me that before I bought it. But also when I started it up, I got a low oil pressure alarm on, which I'm not too excited about. But it seems to run, it's not making any sounds. So we'll take a look at that in a minute. Here's a bit of information I found so far there. The air filter. The engine is a Nissan H20. I think that S tells you something about it. There's an H20 and an H22. Version 2, but this is an older one obviously. It might tell me the age from that serial number too. Prop rod promptly broke when I uh, opened the hood. I think they had it out and then they installed it upside down and I broke it in half. And uh, yeah, so the true mast height, 192 inches, 16 feet. And tail light lens. So this thing has got turn signals, which is pretty cool, and backup lights and everything. So you can uh, put a slow moving sign on it and take it out on the road, which I'm pretty excited about. So I need to take it to the car wash. That's the hours. It's got a fram on it of many, many moons it's been on there. There's a little plate that goes over the uh, radiator. You can check the coolant. Um, obviously got a big counterweight on it. Checking the tires. There's some chunks out of the sides of this. The tires will be one of the last things I change. I want to make sure this thing runs good before I go and buy tires for it. Plus I need to learn more about them. 
have to get a, a flashlight here. I'll take a look at one thing that should be looked at. I got this machine sight unseen. I just found it on the Facebook marketplace. Talked to the guy, asked him if I'd be angry if when I got here, and he said no. But uh, so far, it's okay. Uh, anyway, I'm trying to find. There's a big pivot in here. You can kind of see it there in the center of the screen. It's not in focus though. So that pivot, there's a big gap above it. Uh, sadly, you can't see it. But anyway, that's going to be a problem to work on that. I hope I don't, if I need to take off the counterweight, I'll need to determine how heavy it is. There's a hook pocket on there to lift it off, and I got a crane. So as long as the, it's under two ton, I can lift it, but uh, yeah, I'd rather not. Couldn't tell you what it weighs. I think the machine weighs uh, around 8,300 pounds altogether. So I, if the counterweight is half the weight of the machine, that would be about the most I can lift. I have no concept of what it weighs. And uh, it's got a, a gutter on the front, so I guess you can put like a plexiglass on top of it and drive around in the rain, and then the, that stops it from dripping on your hands and on the controls. See the gutter? There's some little pegs here, so you can fabricate something and slap it up there. Looks like they just used some strapping to hold it on. I didn't get it. wasn't with the machine when I saw the pictures of it. So TCM. So I do intend to paint this machine because uh, it's got to look good if it's going to hang around the house. Otherwise, people are not going to appreciate it. You call the cops on me if it's a mess. It's got full floating. Uh, I guess you call it a front axle. It's got where the diff is located anyway. Good sized pumpkin in there. It's got drum brakes on the front, no brakes on the back. And these are uh, a style of split rim. And uh, cause I've not worked on this before, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let the air out of the tires before I uh, separate them from the machine. Cause I don't wanna kill myself and I don't know which bolts are which. You'd think that the dangerous ones would be facing backwards But they're not. So I'll let the air out that way. If I take out the wrong ones, I assume that the little ones are probably holding the rims together, but I don't know. They don't trust me. I've never worked on one of these before. So like I said, I'm just going to take the uh, valve cores out and uh, empty the tires before I take this off the machine. Otherwise, uh, it's a fast way to kill yourself. On the back, yeah. Sort of the same deal, and they left the nut off because uh, in the way of the valve stem, or the valve stem's in the way of it, rather. So, I don't know, I'm not gonna risk my life. So, I'll have to try to find a date code on these tires and see if they're original or not. If, uh, if we're pointing towards uh, the 80s or early 90s, and I'll know that they're original. And kind of tell me what age the machine is. I'll probably get chains for it, so I need to get the, the right tires and chain package for it. Living in uh, Canada and hoping to do some snow plowing with it, depending on how uh, things work out. So you can put uh, a plow on here or a, a scoop and then dump it or t tilt it or tilt sideways with the uh, auxiliary hydraulics. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I guess we'll take a look at the engine. We'll get this thing started eventually, but I still got to open the door to do that. Just bear with me, I got to trip the support. Yeah, so there's a support there to uh, hold this up, but you need the hydraulics there to hold it up and when you're lifting it, and when you're putting it down, it makes 
so you don't bust your fingers. So take a look at what's going on in here. It's missing a bolt off the distributor right off the hop. There's the Nissan H20 engine. S99, 9502J, I don't know. To figure that out. It smells a lot like gas, and uh, I think I figured out why. Some, it's got the choke here, which is like a auto reset choke, but somebody had wrapped a bunch of wire around it. So the choke is like always on. So that's kind of crazy, I don't know why the hell they did that. There's some electronics on here. I think there's a fuel cutoff valve or something. It doesn't look like anybody's put oil in it in a long time. Any evidence of anybody touching it? <laughs> Belt's uh, original. So I have to change that. I'm just waiting for the parts manual to get delivered. And then it's supposed to have like a, a narrow, long battery. It's got an interstate Megatron on it. So that's all right that they, they bought a decent battery for it. And I figured out the age of it. It doesn't matter. I'm going to have to start putting quick disconnects on my batteries because like there's a battery in that thing, a battery in this, and then there's batteries all over the place. I've got a battery on the floor. And uh, I just don't need a battery and everything all the time. So that's uh, the fuel fill there. I looked in there. It looks good. There's no rust in it. That's uh, this fuel sender here. I've yet to determine if that works or not. There should be a, a tap on the bottom of the tank. I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't know if the tank is all the way there or not. I'll find it eventually. So being Japanese, I imagine everything is metric on it. So it's got a, a decent air filter in it. It's got like a nice big filter, like my six liter van actually. But it looks good. There's nothing bad going on in there. Radiator looks good. It's a little bit low. So I know that, uh, what am I trying to say? That the uh, vacuum return back from this guy isn't working. So I'll have to uh, replace that little hose, maybe the rad cap, and get that working again. There's a fuel filter down there in that little pot to get that. In order to get the drain pan under this thing, what I need to do is uh, put a, uh, a three-ton jack under it and lift it up. And that seems to work pretty good. Then you can put blocks under it just to prevent any concern. So yeah, they said that they put a carburetor on this about five years ago. That seems to make sense. It looks new, actually. They said that they bought two other machines and stopped using this one recently. And it's just been sitting around, so they decided to sell it. They're asking five grand for it initially, and it went for thirty-five hundred. He didn't post the hours. And uh, he said he didn't know anything about it, even though he knew everything about it. I don't know. It's kind of a funny way to go around selling something. I guess he didn't want to take any responsibility for it. The oil tank is here. I'll let you know what kind of oils this uses once I figure that out. There should be two filters in there, like a return filter and then a, a pickup strainer or something along those lines. You can see it's never been opened. For some reason, it smells like diesel. I don't know why it would smell like diesel. Unless they put diesel in the hydraulics for some reason. When I got it delivered, there was a bunch of dog food here and like a rat's nest down in there. But uh, I vacuumed that up and there hasn't been any creatures roaming around. So I don't think it made the trip. It was a 10 hour trip for the truck driver to go and pick this up and bring it back. I guess we'll pull the floorboards off and take a look under there. And uh, true to being Japanese, they got these perverse, gigantic Phillips head screws on it. I don't know. The Japanese need to stop doing that. 
like it's got the Phillips holding the instrument cluster in and they're all stripped just evil I don't know why they do that and then I've never seen one this big before looks like someone's thrown some of them out and put in regular fasteners which are kind of concerning because they don't look like they're metric they look like they're standard someone probably cross of those things in there is not great the uh, muffler is in the back here see it. I can turn on the flashlight but it's going to wash everything out. But it's just hanging out in here. So it'll be blowing exhaust on you when you're driving or turning around. You can convert these to propane fairly readily. I think it's like 400 US to buy a kit. Less the tank. And then uh, so you got to buy a tank and get it tested regularly. So I'm going to just try to get by with uh, gasoline. I think that'll be fine for my purposes. So we'll take a couple measurements here, see how big this thing is. Just going to put this down and measure across the back of the weight. Measure the Yeah, it's about 43, 44 inches. Wide, so it's a bit over three and a half feet. It's under four feet wide. Let's see how long it is, uh, not including the uh, forks. Yeah, so the front of the wheel. Right. Back of the weight is about 96, so it's roughly the size of a, a sheet of plywood. If you're gonna find a place to put it in your shop. Obviously, you need to be a bit bigger than a sheet of plywood because you need to be able to maneuver it. But kind of plan for roughly about that. Once I get the manuals with the full specs for this unit, I'll provide a bit more information for it. So, like I mentioned, there's lots of rollers. It's got turn signals and headlights. Turn signal lever right there. Parking brake, like I said, it doesn't work. There's only one cable. I'm hoping the other cable is underneath the floorboard. That door there is for accessing the uh, torque converter or transmission or something. I'm not exactly sure how this thing works. There's got to be a way to service a differential as well. I haven't seen anything, so hopefully it's obvious when we get the uh, floorboards up. So we'll shut this down and uh, get it taken open. All right, so we got the floorboards up. Had to take the uh, throttle cable off of the carburetor. This is a gas pedal as part of the floorboard. This just had the uh, thumb screws holding it down. It actually came out pretty good just with the flat screwdriver. This filter is actually on just like finger tight, so I'm not surprised it's kind of oily here. I think for the condition of the or age of the machine, this is kind of an acceptable amount of filth. And then uh, to get it to the car wash and apart and get it in and out of there quickly, we'll see how I do. That might be uh, another filter there in that container. So I have to clean that off and see what I can find out about that. This one might be an L60A filter. It's hard to say if that's the filter element number or not. I have to clean that out pretty good. I don't want anything falling into the uh, transmission. And then the transmission, you can't really tell, but it's like back to back with the differential. I don't think that there is a, uh, a drive shaft in there. You can see the filler for the uh, transmission there. It can use, I think it uses either Dextron ATF or 10W oil. That's the case for the, uh, the modern versions of these. And like I said, I'm still waiting for the manual for the, uh, let's see what the heck this thing uses. It doesn't look like it needs much attention. See what we can find out in this thing. Smells cute. It smells like oil. It's not diesel. It's nice and clear. Usually the oil on these things is all milky and nasty. But uh, not the case with this one. The starter, the appendix isn't working correctly, so I need to look at replacing it or just living with it. But, uh, 
clicks and doesn't start all the time, just spins without engaging the flywheel. It's not really a big deal. So you can see it's outfitted with the uh, four valves down there. If you wanted to put a fifth valve in there, I don't think uh, that's going to happen. I think that uh, you only get what they give you. Well, maybe you take the valve part back apart and add another one, I don't know. Another hydraulics guy, I don't know a lot about him. See the tilt cylinders are pretty filthy. If there's a grease point in there, it's never been touched in a long time. So that's uh, about that. I guess if we're going to start it, we'll have to put the uh, floorboard back in so that we can uh, actuate the throttle. So I guess we'll do that and we'll take a look at that in a second. Alright, so I decided it wasn't time to put the uh, floorboard back in. I wanted to do a bit more exploring. So I found the uh, brake pedal switch there. You can see the master cylinder is right here. Then the uh, fill-up bottle is attached up there. It's nice and full. Brakes seem to work. Just the parking brake doesn't work. Couldn't find the missing parking brake cable. I'm not sure that it is missing. I won't know until I get the parts diagram on how it's uh, routed. It might be split off somewhere else in the uh, truck somewhere. Um, I got that cap off for the uh, fluid for the transmission. It's uh, just a tapered plug like a, with a dipstick on it. And it had red fluid on it. So it's got like uh, transmission type fluid in there. So it's good to know that that's what's in there. I'll have to drain that out. Then there's uh, two sensors on the transmission here. One would be the uh, neutral lockout for starting it. And then the other one would be the backup lights. I found a, a loose wire. I gotta figure out what that is. The wiring diagrams are in the parts diagram and the uh, service manual. So between the two of them, I should be able to figure out what that's for. I haven't found a license plate light mounting location on this vehicle. I noticed there was another plug. Down in here that uh, could possibly be for something. But it's got four connectors on it, so I don't know what that might be. And then it turns out these pins can be greased through the chain pocket. So if you keep it clean, you can grease it in through there. So that's uh, easily accessible. There's no reason not to grease them once every 10 years, I guess. How often it is. I tried picking away at that thing. I couldn't figure out if it's a filter or not. It has a wire connected to it, which I thought was kind of curious. But uh, I'm unclear as to what it is, but we'll figure that out again with the parts diagram. And uh, oil filter is there. I tried to get it off, but it's that one's on super tight, and then that one's on is super loose. And then uh, when you're checking for playing your steering, I've got a bit more than half a, a turn of play. And uh, seems some of it is in the steering box, and then some of it's in the linkages, so I'll have to figure that out. Not that that's super important, as long as I can pass my certification when the time comes to do that. And then uh, I'm not going to do anything really with this until I take some training because I don't want to kill myself or kill somebody else because they're pretty heavy and uh, capable machines but only in the right hands otherwise they're just a, a danger so I gotta figure that out so uh, I guess now we'll put the floorboard back in so I gotta put the cable back in on the carburetor which it looks like it's indexed it should be easy whereas if you took it off on the other end I don't know if that's stock or not but it's just got like a screw, like an old bicycle brake kind of thing, repair system. So uh, hopefully that's uh, all good. But I think I just got to put that back on the carb and then clip that thing into a particular location. I'll be good to go without requiring any adjustment. So I'll do that now. All right, so I ended up doing a lot of cleaning of the machine, just using a scraper and the vacuum, pretty much filled up the vacuum. Just scraping the uh, tilt cylinder areas is quite shocking how much junk was in there. I ended up uh, finding the bolt that was missing from the uh, distributor cap and uh, 
it was underneath the battery, but when I tried to put it in, it wouldn't fit. It was actually the hole had been drilled out and oversized. So I put in a long metric screw and uh, tightened that down. Got my uh, accelerator pedal hooked up. I haven't put the uh, floorboards in completely because this is going to come apart. So, see if we can do this with one hand. You got to be in neutral. You turn on the key. So that oil light stays on when it's running, which is kind of concerning and not at the same time. It's pretty cold blooded. The guy told me that before I got it. So like when you need to warm it up. Steering is funny because it's like backwards from normal. And then you can turn the steering like really far to the, to the point where it's like the wheels are sideways. enough but the capacity is 5,000 pounds. If you go to uh, the next stage is lower than 5,000 pounds they should be a bit smaller. You see the seal that's uh, popped out on the mast. And uh, yeah so to test the, the chains you want to have the uh, forks about two inches off the ground. Let's see if they're the same. This one's a bit loose and that's the case on uh, both chains for whatever reason. So I guess this is the introduction to this uh, machine. I'm not sure how much I can show of uh, me working on it, of whether it'd be interesting or not. Please let me know either way if you want to see this machine in the videos a lot or not. I'm going to be buying a few parts for it and kind of it together and they're putting tarps up to uh, make this bay kind of sealed off so they can uh, take it apart and uh, paint it. So thank you for watching.